Well, this is an interesting guitar. It's handmade by a chap called McMillan, who made this guitar when he was working in the famous Loudon Guitar Company. Loudons are very well known throughout the world. And, and Mr. Loudon lived across the street from me, one of the few people that I never knew. I talked to him for ages on many occasions, but I didn't know he was the Loudon. So uh, I never talked to him about guitars. <laughs> silly, silly, silly. Anyway, I don't know what the top is, but it's got a lot of beautiful wood thing in it there. Experts on wood would know that. Pretty sure it's a mahogany body made in several pieces. The neck, uh, I don't, I don't think, I think the neck's been made that way. It wouldn't be, unless, excuse my sniffing, but unless the neck came from a different guitar and they joined it, but it looks good. It plays good, neck straight enough. It's a very thin guitar. I'm gonna have trouble because uh, this here is faulty. It's snapped off. But, excuse me sniffing, but not only is it snapped off, it's a bit loose and it's crackling, so that needs to be replaced. It needs a very good cleaning. Uh, it's all working electrically. Nothing problematic there. Frets, it hasn't been overplayed. The action, if anything, is too low, which is what the problem is. And I think, what do I see just there? Let me just see. I don't know whether I see a damage nut there or not, but it look oh, it looks hairline cracked. The strings are in a rattan shape, rattan, rattan love. But that's to be understood. Come on, shh. Come on, boy, ah, that's a boy, good boy. The fret has got a sort of a, an unusual finish to it, which worries me, because I usually do some fret scraping and I'll have to be very careful there. But overall, it looks like a nice guitar. It's gonna be fun to work on. Why are you not in focus? The, the tuners, by the way, are ES tuners, which are a very nice make. Why, why is this not focusing? For goodness sake, focus. Uh, focus on my, my, my Beatles posters. They're actually quite rare, by the way. They, that's, those are original uh, by the choppy who painted them. What's the name of them? I had to pay a fairly high price. Uh, pulp or something like Pulp, I forget. And I forget what his name is, but he signed them. But those are original prints, not originals, by the way. Good there, right, ESP, they're nice tuners. All right, despite fighting with focusing all the time, I'll come back to you when I've had a more, even more detailed look on it, okay? I'm gonna kick this, I'm gonna kick this camera. Cleaned up a little bit, uh, but still a lot way to go. I noticed that the pickups were very, very low and that these two were, screws were set up way up high. And I also noticed that there's a damage to the pickups there and there from where the strings were hitting the pickups. But I also noticed that there's no stability left and right, so the pickups end up going down low. Other aspect is that this pickup doesn't move up or down in any way, shape or form. So you, it looks like, well, I'll have to do some more investigating, but it might need, there might be no springs underneath it. It might be attached directly to the wood, but I'll check that. But what we need to do is, that's too low. That's too low. And that is still a bit too low too. So we'll probably pack them with something if there's no springs. Uh, so that's just a further update. Okay. Oh, I forgot to mention that the uh, end nut was adjusted for a guitar strap. We may keep that, I don't know. Here, when I've loosened this off, that this is completely loose, whatever that is, and I think he's bored a hole into the wood to allow this to fit. So I'm going to do more investigation but it looks like there's more than just the switch at the top is broken. Uh, but I'll take that off and see what it's all about. All right, come back to you then. Okay, here's the problem. 
This is the five-way switch for the Loudon, one I call Loudon guitar. This is the part that broke off. You can't put a knob on it. But to you can't, uh, here's the other part of it which goes on the back. But they don't sell these anymore, right? They sell equivalent switches which are slightly different wired, but that doesn't matter. The thing about this is though that it's been shaved, if you can see there, the, the builder of the guitar has shaved that so that it fit because it's a very thin guitar. So I am able to fix the mechanism. The mechanism was uh, loose. I was able to tighten that up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to attempt to do is that I've done this once before on another guitar, but it had the, the lug there that it was needed. So I was able to create a epoxy resin shaped knob out of uh, milliput uh, epoxy resin. I think I showed it to some of you the other day. I'll show you what it is. Let me just see. It's called milliput epoxy resin. It's two parts of an epoxy resin. One's a hardener and the other something else. I don't know what it is, but you cut off a little bit of that. It comes out pure white, but you cut off a little bit of that and you mix it together with your fingers really, really, really quite a while, maybe five minutes. It's a bit tedious, actually. But by the time you're finished, you've got a little round ball of white. And what I intend to do is I'm going to drill a hole through there, which is above the guitar, the, the, the guitar wood comes there, but I'm going to drill a hole through there. I'm going to put a piece of wire through the hole and bring it up and twist it round and then cut it short about there, but leave the two ends of the wire. Let me use a bit of soldering. Say one end of the wire is going to be like that and the other end of the wire is going to be pointing the other way. Only a tiny fraction. Now you're talking in small millimeters. So you're going to have a bit of wire coming up there, one end of the wire going that way and one end of the wire going that way. And then I'll use the epoxy ra resin and shape the knob around that and make it as fine as I can. It works quite well, actually. And it will harden into like a rock really, really hard. And with the hole in it and a little bit of wire, that'll hold it in position quite strongly and that should be enough to create a knob on the end. Now, why not buy another thing as well? They're 45 quid just to get a replacement and they're too wide as well for this special handmade guitar. So I go to drill the hole, put the wire in. Uh, actually, I forgot to tell you that I'm gonna put the wire in through the hole like that, but I'm actually, I've already tested. I can do a bit of soldering to hold it in place as well. So hopefully that will all go beautifully. And when you see me next, I won't take you through drilling the hole. You've seen a hole drill before. I might show you a still of the wire. And then uh, after that, I'll show you the finished product. Fingers crossed. See those fingers? Maybe those ones as well. Okay, hopefully it'll all go well. So cutting the hole was easy. Much easier than the problem that I face next. Let's just stick with the hole at the moment. It's too close to the surface for me to do any soldering. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some stiff wire and bring it up and twist it round and put a dab of solder just at the top to hold it. I'll show you that later, but that's not the main problem. Well, problem, I shouldn't say problem, uh, issue. I've put the switch back in. Excuse me, I'm trying to fiddle this. sitting on my groin now. Where's the screwdriver? I'll just show you in more detail. That's the switch, all right. Where's the camera lens? Oh, there's the camera lens there. And do you see that little thing down there? That is a shaft that goes right through and it's screwed onto them. And I've discovered that why it became loose is because the thread had gone in it. So 
I managed to put it back in and put a touch of super glue on it and it's working but it might fall off again someday. So what I'm going to do is between <laughs> Millie put again, between there and the guitar, I'm going to put a blob of the epoxy resin again, and that should hold it forever, whether it comes loose or not. If there's nothing down there, if the epoxy resin sits there against the guitar and there, it doesn't matter as long as it sits there and stays there, and that should hold it up against it if the super glue doesn't hold it. So that's the plan. I'll show you it when it's finished. <laughs> it looks like a monster, but it will work because this is epoxy resin paste and it will go solid like a brick. And then I can start to shape it. I'll have to shape it in position and be very careful that I don't damage the screen, but I'll, you can shape and sand it and I'll reduce it down in size and smooth it and I'll get it down to a sort of a smaller size and then I'll get it black, paint it black. Now I see, actually, well, we'll see how it looks because white might actually suit that guitar better. Well, we'll see, anyway. But it looks a bit of a, a, do, a what do you call it, one of those uh, Stonehenge monuments, but it will be shaped down, all right? Okay, this is the knob that I created. Uh, I've been through all the processes. Now you notice that I deliberately kept it, make it look like a marble rather than go for a pure black. It's a little bit bigger than a normal knob, but that marble effect gives it something special for a handmade guitar. Let me just go around this again. Let you see it from this side. Now, it's, it's had one coat of gloss on it and it'll have another coat of gloss before we're finished. Up this guitar, I set the pickups because they were all over the show. There's no springs in the front pickup, it's a bit of foam beneath it. Uh, the brass bridge is a great idea because it resonates the sound great, but it's an awful thing to try to, after about uh, uh, three months, it goes all dull and awful. And this kind of particular bridge too is just full of little holes which are hard to clean. So I have the uh, brass height adjustments steeping and they'll need to be polished and cleaned. They were all stiff as well. Uh, but now I've got the nut on, uh, knob on the thing and everything's working, the electrics are working. I'm going to start working on the uh, frets because the frets are actually quite stinking. They're actually big thick globs of something on it. I think you can see that there and there the whole way through it. It's been a well played guitar. You see those globs? Those frets have been cleaned and, and scraped and they're nice and smooth. But the other frets, if you see, they've got dents in them and like sand, but these are now smooth. So when I finished, I'll uh, oil it and clean it. But that's my job now, is to clean it. All right. I'm not bore you with clean to uh, show you this. The quite a bit of play, wear, play on the <coughs> frets where they'll have to be worked on and cleaned up a bit. But I'm not going to go crazy on them. I'm just going to bring them down a bit because they're not the most thick, they're not the thickest of frets. So I'm just gonna smooth it down a bit. That's the frets almost cleaned. There's still some roughness to smooth down. Yeah, I don't know what kind of wood that is. I, I don't think it's rosewood. It's gotta be something else. But then again, I'm not an expert on wood. I don't care what type of wood it is as long as it works and plays well. I just don't like the idea that that looks rough, but it's actually quite smooth. But that's all nice and clean. And the next shot you'll have of it will be after I've uh, polished the frets down a little bit and then oiled it and you'll see it's be beautiful. It'll be beautiful. All right, nice clean fretboard, nice and smooth. Frets have all been polished and brought down. Everything's nice and clean and level. The, the neck is perfectly level. I'll just, I tend to like a little bit of a bow, but I'm going to leave the neck perfectly level to give this super fast play. If it doesn't work, then 
too bad. Now you can hear my music in the background, but it doesn't matter to me because I don't monetize my videos so they can, they can do what they want. All right, bye bye. Simple Stanley blade knife. I think you've got a picture of that, haven't you? You've seen that. Someone had drilled a hole in it, put a screw in it, and put the guitar strap holder there and left an ugly hole. Now I filled it and stained it to the color that's closest to match the guitar. Once I'd done that, I'd filled up the balance with super glue. And now my, my, my intention is to bring the super, super glue down flat. And you can't use sandpaper on it at this stage because you'd sand away all the edges. So I'm going to use a, a blade. Now, some people, and I might do it myself depending on how I get along, some people put a bit of tape each side so that they get down to it. Uh, I'm going to just use my judgment because I find that the tape because I find that the tape gives you a false sense of uh, security and it also means you still have to scrape when you get down below so I'm also going to try to use a smaller blade which means I won't scratch as much around it but the idea is to take off can you see that? No, you can't see. You can't see nothing, can you? Let me move around here. Right, let me just see. What I'm doing is scraping off the layer of super glue. It's just ordinary super glue. I see the color is not perfect for the stain that I used. But what I'm trying to do is get down to that level so that you don't see the difference between this the body and the patch and there's some way to go nicely strung up nicely polished nicely cleaned new strings put on Need a little bit of something in there notice fix that it didn't have a cover should have a little cover be worth buying one in the future and sticking one on just to stop the dust and dirt getting in there and it's not pretty without it needs something on to cover it anyway that's it that's all polished up new strings i'm going to tune it up now check the straightness of the neck check the uh, intonation blah 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 I might let you see that on the other well i had to switch off my music because it was gregorian chanting and i think you probably think i'm some sort of weird freak if you hear Gregorian chanting but I just love the melodies but anyway I also need to switch it off to get this in the tune I'm getting the tuner set up here right sounded like the what's that C close notice there's two necks on the bench this one here is bent the wrong way it's bent like that and I have a lot of pressure on it even with the truss rod it doesn't fix it so I've got a lot of pressure on the middle to try to force the neck I don't think I'm going to be successful but let's leave it right that I don't want that perfectly tuned I just want to check to see what the necks like not bore you to tears with that. Okay, what we have here is an... I can't remember the name of the guy. Ernie Middleton? Handmade guitar. Ernie Middleton. Is that the right name for the guy? Ernie Middleton works at Avalon now, but he used to work for, Av for Loudon Guitars. And this, I believe, is one of his early ones of his early made ones when he was at Loudon's Guitars. It's a uh, 
obviously a solid body. It needed some work on the action done. Intonation was miles out. The uh, switch knob was missing. Pickup heights were terrible. String heights were okay when they first arrived. They're done now. I've cleaned the frets and uh, shaped the frets and shaped the uh, the wood as well. Cleaned the wood, polished the wood. I don't think it's ever been oiled. It was very, very dry. It was quite worrying, actually. The nuts were loose inside. The switch was broken, and I've showed you how I fixed it. But it's... Uh, and this here was tarnished and all set out and all the little height adjustments were all uh, rusted but I managed to recover them all but it's a lovely guitar <laughs> brand new strings hard to keep them in tune Wrote it adjusted on it, and there's a few little things on it that. Uh, oh, and uh, there was a hole in the back which I patched up and uh, glossed over, and I patched up a lot of other little things. I can't remember half the things I'd done to this guitar, but it's playing well now, anyway. If I was making this guitar, which I, I'm not going to be making this guitar, I would change a lot of things on it, but uh, it must have been an early one of his. And uh, it's it's very very good. It's probably worth more money because it is one of his. It's had a good polish here, but it's a great little guitar. And that's it. Goodbye.